four, five, six, and seven, you always have a typed outline. You always have reading citations, which I'll explain a little bit more. The main thing is you need to do the readings. Then you're going to be including the citations for them with your outline. And then I'll get to the interview part in a moment. Jamie. What if um, when you prepare your speech that you don't, um, you do it on your own? You don't go to like the web or whatever, so you don't need the citations, so you just leave them out of your outline? No, nope, you do some reading. Okay. Just like what Sean was doing. If Sean were just talking to friends, he might not decide that he needed to read about history or implements or demographics. But for a speech in the college class, everyone should do readings. And again, that's because it makes it, it can, if you choose the readings well, it can make the speech better than it would be without the readings. It's just more interesting. <coughs> in addition to the information itself, when you do some readings, it shows people that you equip, you've invested some time and, and thought in the speech. It also gives you more credibility because Sean can say anything he wants about haircutting, but if he says the famous haircutting expert <coughs> Jacob Smith in 1842 said this, it makes people more likely to believe what he has to say. Ian? Oh, I was going to say it lends credibility. Yeah, it lends credibility. So, okay. So that's the rationale for doing the reading. Now, once you've done the reading, the question is, what do you do with them? You can't quote the Zohan. No. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me make it clear that I want you to do at least three readings of non-web sources. However, you may do as many readings as you want. You may do 65 readings and 144 readings, if you'd rather, just as long as three of them are not from the web. The reason I'm asking you not to have all web sources, or the reason I'm asking you to have at least three that are not web sources, is that when I was teaching this class many years ago in Wenatchee, had a young woman giving a talk on teen smoking. She said, ladies and gentlemen, the world is in such terrible shape. Do you realize there are two billion teen smokers in the world today who are going to grow up and have lung cancer and die and cost us all kinds of money? So at the end of her speech, I said, Stephanie, did, how many teen smokers did you say there are in the world? Two, two billion. Do you know how many people there are in the world? <coughs> at that time, there were only six billion people in the world. I said, Stephanie, are you saying that one out of every three human beings in the world is a teen smoker? Oh, I don't know. So where did you find that? And where did she find it? On the web. On the web, okay. There's a lot of, I don't have to tell you, there's a lot of junk on the web. So I want you to use at least three sources that are not web sources. Amanda. So we can go on the internet, though, and look at magazines or newspapers to get reviews. If you stuff. want to use the internet that way, use ProQuest. Do any of you know what ProQuest is? Some of you do, Kevin does. What is it, Kevin? It's a resource library. Yes, it's a database of magazines and newspapers, millions of them, or thousands of them and millions of articles, that you can access easily from your computer. How are we doing on time, by the way? We're on our second. Oh, we're already on the second one. We're on 350. Okay, so let's go to a new document here. And actually, I'll go to course. On Angel, for our class, you'll see that there's a section over on the right, which I can't get to yet. Here it is. It says, Finding Readings in ProQuest under Course Resources, right below the syllabus and the course roster. If you'll click on that, it will go to ProQuest. If you are online, well, that says it, there we go. It will take you to this page on the library page, which goes to ProQuest. Click on that. That will take you to this page where you can search for zillions and zillions of articles. Now, even though you access this on the web, it's not really a web source, like a .com or even a .edu. Mm -hmm. yes, sometimes sometimes I have troubles getting into that, and you just have to call the librarian, and they will give you the, the login and password. 
because sometimes it'll ask you if you've never done it from your computer. It'll ask you for a login and password. Yeah. If you're at home, you definitely need to have the password. Yeah, in the library, I don't yeah. give it to you. But it's down on the, on the front page of your angel. It shows the password. Oh, and really so where, so where is it again? Doesn't it basically on the fall down to just, I mean, page before the, the internet, we Facebook had to there? cite our That's sources. Yeah. Don't we have the integrity as grown individuals to find sources that are reputable? I'm I mean, helping. Do you not trust us to find reputable sources? It's not sources? a matter of trust, Ian. It's a matter of, of no. uh, Ronald Reagan had a, a saying in Russian. I don't remember what it was in Russian. But translated, it was well. No. no. <laughs> translated, it was trust but, but verify. verify. Right. Yeah. Three words so I'm trying to them. help you. You may use any sources you want, just as long as three of them show that you have been able to use ProQuest or some other format. Right, I just hesitate because the more logins, the more passwords. I mean, I'm, I'm having trouble with Angel. Now I got another one I got to log in that I may have to go to the library. Yes. That's right. I mean, it's... That's right. So just find another resource. Nothing says you, you can can always go. That. You can always go to the library and look look in a, in a book. Right, but what I'm saying is there are so many other valid websites out there that... Use, use. whatever you want just as long as three of them are not web sources. So... You can do whatever you want um, as long as So when we go here to um, get a resource, do we print that out or just write it down in our heart? Oh, good question. That's the next step. Let's say we're going to go to hair cutting. Mm -hmm. okay. But let's say African American hair cutting. Right on. <laughs> uh, hair cutting, African American. All right. See what it says. <coughs> it should be searching. The little bubble is going there. Okay. A different state of race relations with few blacks living there. Utah is feeling its way. That doesn't look like Raising consciousness. It doesn't see. Oh, wait. African Americans and hair. There's a new. There's a new movie, isn't there? By. What's his name? Spike Lee. Well, I think it's called Good Hair. Oh no, that's uh, uh Chris Rock. Chris, Chris, Chris Rock. Rock. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Okay. Okay. Black women and exercise. Hairy <laughs> situation. <laughs> Occupational lic licensing regulation. Blah, 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 blah. With hair pat downs. Complete racial bias. <laughs> Okay, well, the point, here, over here. <laughs> the point here is that you can find, well, how many are there? But none of those actually have team. anything to do with hair cutting. The main uh, I don't know. It says there are 56 of them. So, I'm just going to wean through it. Play with it. Surgeon General sees hair care as an exercise barrier for women. Yeah, that would be fine. Maybe you could sprinkle that in there. Okay. There, what I'm trying to get you to do, among other things, is to read. If you read... If your topic is this big, I would say read about this big if you have time, and pluck something from here that looks good that you can bring in, and pluck something from over here that looks good. Have fun with it if you have time. I mean, if I were researching your topic, I would have a lot of fun. I, I am. So you can have even more by doing the reading, you see. Okay. Okay? Now, the question that Cece had was, what do you do once you've done the reading? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, one thing you're going to do is you will mention your readings in your speech. If you remember the rubric that I showed you. You will recall that I didn't discuss this, but I said that there are three little boxes over here where it says readings mentioned. Now, before last quarter, or before I got into the Open Course Library, I always urged students to mention their readings, but I didn't require it. When I told Ellen Bremen this from Highline, she said, well, at Highline, we require that. 
So I thought, well, if Highline's going to require it, and she's my instructional designer who's mm. determining whether my course is, act is satisfactory, I will require it too. And it really makes sense to require it, because if you say, Napoleon said such and such, but you don't tell us where you got that, how do we know that that is really credible? Mm -hmm. So mention your readings, mention where they came from. Now, one reason for this is saying that Napoleon indicated that haircutting gives you confidence is not going to be a controversial matter. Probably everybody will say, oh, that's interesting, Napoleon said that. But a lot of the speeches you give in your lives are not going to be informational speeches. They're going to be persuasive speeches, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're giving a speech and you say, I believe that abortion should be abolished because Napoleon said blah, 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 somebody in the audience is going to wonder, how do I know that that's true? Why should I believe you if you don't tell me where Napoleon said that and when? So it's best to get into the habit, whenever you read something, <coughs> of telling the audience what it is. So in your speech, in answer to CC's question, one of the things you need to do with the readings is you need to tell us what they are in the speech. Is that clear for everyone? Now the other, yes, Jamie. So while you're doing your speech, you proceed with like, um, whatever the quote is, blah, 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 blah. And then at the end, you say, so when I made this, you know, statement, or I said this, I, um, you know, this is where I got it from. Do you wait till the end to use your citations? It can be a very simple, smooth thing in the middle of the speech itself. According to so-and-so in, in an article. So I can say, oh, so, you know, um, I'll use, think and use good communication, um, as I got, you know, from Dr. Benetti or something yeah. like that, out of his book, or yeah. PBS. Yes, yes. Okay. Because in a real speech, in a real mm -hmm. academic or non-academic -ac environment, if you just say where it came from, then somebody can always ask you, well, what page was that on? Th this isn't an essay in which you need to have the page and all, all of that material in the middle. Does, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. So that's one of the things you're going to do. So see, the other thing you're going to do is you're going to provide a list of the reading citations. Going back to here. If you look in the same area where it says course resources, first one was finding resources in ProQuest, so you can find them. Then the second one says, citing your readings in APA format. How many of you are familiar with APA format? Okay, about half, maybe <laughs> two-thirds. Okay, what, what is APA? What does it stand for? American Psychiatric Association. Uh, very close, American Psychological Psych Association. Psych yes. yes, yes. Okay, well, there is a gigantic industry in the United States in colleges and universities for form. And by that I mean <coughs> the form of your papers, <coughs> the form of your reading. <coughs> if you have been to our library, you know that there is a thick manual called the APA Style Guide. That tells you everything you didn't think you needed to know and may not even need to know about how to write. Okay? So they have rules on everything. For instance, just to take a, a picky example, and you know that some of you have written to me and I will write back to you and say, P.S., I urge you to use conventional spelling, punctuation, and grammar in all of your writing, including email messages, in order to project a, a professional image. Any of you received that from me? Maybe not. Okay. Well, there, is, there are certain rules that different people have come up with. APA has their rules, other people have other rules, but let's take Straightforward sentence, Mid Jamie. You always spell nine. That's correct. Yeah, okay. Well, anybody can read there are nine dogs in the candle and understand it, but the rule says if it's under ten, you're supposed to spell it out. Right? Okay, 
So I think all of the different rule forms <laughs> would, would tell you that. APA would tell you that, the Chicago style book would tell you that, the New York Times would tell you that, and what's her name, Tarabian would tell you that, and the MLA would tell you that. All